Well, it'll be an interesting season for us. Obviously, we're coming in as new boys. Uh, it's a hard second division. There's a lot of good teams, big teams, uh, teams like Newcastle, West Ham, who have been relegated, and we've come up with Wolves ourselves. And it's going to be a hard division, but uh, what we'll do is we'll set out to do our best, and we're aiming for number one spot. If we can't get number one, we'll go for number two. Then if we can't get that, we'll go for a playoff spot. If we can't get that, we'll obviously end up as high as possible in the league. And we may have to get one or two new players, depending on how the season goes. And obviously, it will, that will depend on injuries and form. Well, you can never achieve what you want at, at any given time. Promotion sometimes provides itself earlier than you anticipate. It may be longer than you anticipate. You've got to grab it whenever it is. Throwing to Sheffield United just inside the West Bromwich Albion half. It's long. Here's Dean. He gets his cross in. Comes out to Agana. Left footed. He sent the keeper the wrong way. And there it is. The first goal to Sheffield United. And it's Tony Agana with it. Free kick cannon takes it left footed. And there they are again. The one two combination. And Agana finishes it off with his head. 2 0. Strike. And that one is just far of the far post. Cross in, Bryson nice, ball out, Gannon, the little tip forward, the square at the back, and there is Brian Dean to finish it off in brilliant style. West Bromwich Albion nil, Sheffield United 3. So it switches keeper with the kick. Long into United's half, but beaten by Gannon. Here comes Agana. Leaves it for Dean, a cracking shot that one. Well, that wasn't far over the bar. Roberts with the corner. Swings it into the near post. Up goes the heads. It's defended out only as far as the edge of the area. Here's Gannon. Gannon to Roberts. Could do with a first time ball. It's first time in. And there's Brian Dean, and that's not far wide. Brian Dean. United then. What are they going to set up here? Oh, what a shot, and what a save from the keeper. United with the corner. Far post this one, and again the keeper absolutely brilliantly tipping it over the bar. So it's Gannon then. Left footed, this will be an in swinger. And so it is. To Dean! Oh yes! 1 0. Brian Dean up at the near post. And that is a super goal. Here it comes again. And Dean is the man equal to it. 1 0. So United thinking out something here. Gannon left-footed. A good strike from Barnes, and again the keeper. There to deny United. But David Barnes with a super little shot. Roberts with the corner. It's swung deep. And Morris is the first there. And United have got their second goal, both from corners. And this time Mark Morris has got to it. Just look how he gets above the defence there. Well, uh, six points out of from two games is ideal. It's uh, something we would have uh, settled from the word go and are highly delighted to have had the uh, maximum points. We couldn't have asked for anything more from the players. Well, to get to the first division is everybody's dream and it's every team's dream and United not having been there for some time obviously didn't expect to get back as quick as we have done and uh, obviously that made it even more exciting and enjoyable. Our Dave came in and we got relegated and uh, with new methods, new style, new players and one wondered how it would be accepted at Bramall Lane where they still talk about John Harris and Tony Curry and Len Badger and all the great names, but the Bassett's won them over, won me over, won promotion to the first division. What more can the guy do? He's created miracles as far as I'm concerned and he's not spent a lot of money doing it. That's the main thing. He's obviously got this talent to find players which uh, other managers seem to uh, overlook or miss altogether. Uh, he not only gets those players, he realises where their strengths and weaknesses are and he motivates them. And this, I think, has been the secret of uh, United's success. It's brilliant. Uh, I, I'm something I've been wanting since they, they went out in 76, 77. And it's, you know, it's 13 years since we've seen him regularly playing the Liverpools and Manchester Uniteds. And it'll be interesting to see how they, uh, how they fare with it now. Going with the corner. Hangs it in. Half cleared by Middlesbrough. Booker first to react. Half cleared again. John Francis to the far post. 
and Middlesbrough in all sorts of trouble. It's in. I think it could go down as an own goal. Watch again as Middlesbrough fail to clear. Stancliffe raises his arm. United are ahead. Slaven. Slaven cuts across here. That is a fine shot and that is a brilliant goal from Bernie Slaven. United on the attack again. He holds it up. Hill first time across the area. And there it is from Bryson. Far post. See again how Bryson is first to react. And that is a fine goal from Sheffield United. It's a cordial siding from Brian Dean if he wants to use it. He chooses to go to the line. Gets in a good cross. That's nice and deep. And there are United again with Bryson. What a goal. Bryson there. Right footed. Top corner. Tracy. He can't do there. It was a little bit of pressure there. I thought the referee could have pulled him up then. And here comes Middlesbrough once more. And that looks as though it's goal bound. It is. And Middlesbrough have their second. Sheffield United under a bit of pressure out here. Cross into the middle. Header from Slaven. And a goal. All square. It's 3 3. So a bit of organising to be done here from this throwing. Here it comes. And that looks like Booker. And as calm as you like, he swings it in with his left foot. Bob Booker, what a goal. What a brilliant turn there by Bob Booker. And doesn't he make it look simple? So the long throw again from Sheffield United. To the near post. And he now, only as far as far as Bryson. Gets in there. A little deflection from Ryan Dean. It's enough though. The near post. United have increased their lead. 2 0. Bryson in. Doing the flick. And there you are. Goal number two. Arms with the kick. On by John Francis. And missed it from Dean. Francis first to react, and there it is. Oh, what a fine goal from John Francis. And that was brilliant reaction because Dean had lost it. Watch here how Dean loses the ball and doesn't know where it is. John Francis did. He also knew where the goal was. Sheffield United definitely with the upper hand, but some defending to do here from... Oh, a lucky deflection as it comes out to uh, the Brighton winger. And he took his time and he chose his spot. And now it's 3-1 to Sheffield United. Quite the first to react to that one. There's some neat football being played in there. But United have time to get them back. And if the cross comes in early, they could be stretched here. And they are stretched. And there it is at 3-2. We've got a game on our hands at Ramol Lane. And the United the first there, but they've lost out here. As Brighton come forward again. Well, at 3-0, you would have thought they would be dead, but here they come. It's 3-2. It could be 3-3. It is 3-3. Oh, my goodness gracious me. What a goal. Going to Brighton. On this left-hand side. I would have thought that United would have reacted there, but they were a bit slow. The chance for them to clear now with Hill and Morris getting all sorts of a tangle there. And suddenly Brighton are on the attack down his left flank. And the ball is delivered now to Paul Wood. He's not going to make it 4-3, he is! And Brighton, who are dead at 3-0, are now in the lead. So the ball played forward. Francis is first to react. He beat the keeper, he's brought down Shirley, that's a penalty. It is a penalty, the referee, no hesitation. And I, for one, would only endorse that. We'll see it again. No mistake. The goalkeeper bringing down John Francis. And Bryson with a chance to make it level. That's four apiece. And we're going to see the game's eighth goal. Bryson then. No mistake whatsoever. All square. It's four apiece. Lovely finish. So the game ticks to its 19 minutes. Have we seen the last action in this one? Eight goals in it. It's all square at 4 4. Or has this game got a sting in its tail? Well, it could have because United are on the attack here with Brian Dean. Cleared by the Brighton defence. As far as Gavin here. Well, that's a lovely little ball to Bryson. What can Bryson do with it? And have United got another chance? Oh, what a finish! John Francis! He surely won the game! It's 5 4! Bryson with the work down the right hand side. What a finish! John Francis! 5 4! Nine goals, what an extravagance! So, corner kick to Sheffield United from John Gannon. 
And Booker with the header, and it's in! Now, did John Francis get a touch on that, or is it straight in from Bob Booker? Chris for yourselves, far post, I think I'll give that one to Bob Booker. Well, here comes Swindon again, defending their lines. United are first to react. A bit of heading tennis going on there between United and Swindon. And it still continues. Now, what can John Francis do? Sets up a nice little loop here. A chance for the uh, defender to clear his lines. He doesn't. He only passes it as far as he. And he makes no mistake. 2-0. The defender with all the time in the world. Well, he'll be kicking himself tonight. Not you, man. 2-0. So, a corner kick to United. Defended from the Plymouth defence, only as far as Gannon. Chance again, Bryson drives that one in! And the goalkeeper, Rhys Wilmot, was just the first man to it. And from Plymouth down with Mark Robson. Kicks in a nice little cross, but Tracy is first to react. Safe pair of hands from the young United keeper. Great continuous again, and really they've had much of this game. And again, Tracy called upon to rescue his side. So, United with the first corner. Up go the heads. Hesford is nowhere. Is the ball in the back of the net? No. Nope. Terry is first there to get it clear. So, United with the corner. The whole city must say look very shaky here. It must be a goal. Well, Chance for United to set up the position again. They've torn this whole city aside of part of the defence. And here he comes on the edge of the area. And once more the time is going to be And everyone knows how. Well, here's Lee Jenkins. The whole city with their first attack and caused a bit of problems for Simon Tracy. Who's there? Hill. It's a testing one. I think Oldham can get this one away, but... Uh, not too far as Sheffield United put the cross in once more. Here's a Garner. And that one's to the far post. And oh, the top of the barn, I think, by Dean felt that was going to fall right onto his forehead. So what will United do from here? Gannon left footed, perhaps? No, there he goes. At the edge of the area. But no goal for United. That time, Brian Dean denied. Tracy in his own half. One sent a good fair distance. And that's one nodded on nicely. A Garner and clear. Very coolly by Andy Barlow. Surely Oldham were under pressure there. And United again. A Garner is first to it. He uses his strength. And again, Oldham first there with Earl Barrett. Gannon and Hill around the ball. Gannon will be. Flicked on. Brian Dean, oh, lovely. Far post. Well, he sneaked in at the back door there. Nobody saw him. Beautiful finish. Look at that. All the space he need. Okay. Got a trouble well. Dean gets a kick for his trouble. Gone, now has he got the speed? He has got the speed. And what a lovely finish. Just look at this. Speed. And he looked up, he knew what was the situation. And then it was far post. Well, he's been trying to pull United out of position. And I think that's Frankie Bunn with the finish. 2-1. Corner to Sunderland. Swings in. Up, up. Well, it's off Brian Dean. It's an own goal. And Sunderland have taken the lead. Gabbiadini put Dean under pressure. Corner. He's got support on his right. He wants to use it. And there it is. And Agorna tries to find a position in the area here. He switched it over left-footed. And Brighton! It's all square at 1-1. Lovely header, and United are right back in it. Garner with all the work there. Beautiful left foot shot, and there's a fine header.
we haven't lost a game as yet in the league and uh, we're sitting on top with uh, 19 points from nine games an excellent start and uh, we're in a tremendous position to sort of set ourselves up for a possible challenge throughout the season but it's still early days yet did you see all the matches most of them i saw most of them and of course there were some horrors within all the glory and uh, excitement mm. Uh, mm. new year's day we should have known. We arrived at the Oxford ground in a police van, which got things off to a bad start. <laughs> I went into Bassett, the bookmakers in the ground. No relation. I hope not. Lost all my money. We got done 3-0. Uh, 4-0 yeah. at Leeds. Yeah. And a yeah. terrible, terrible midweek match at uh, West Ham, 5. Yeah. It's a big weight off my shoulders. I feel like we've been at doldrums for, what is it, 14 years now? Uh, I've had some fabulous times sitting out there. I, I remember when we got promotion from fourth. I remember when we went down to fourth. Uh, they've given me a lot of heart attacks and stress, this club, but I, I can't tell you how elated I was when we went up. I thought, great stuff. That's off to Bassett and all. Absolutely delighted. Um, 14 years outside the, the first division, it was, uh, I think, quite a momentous occasion for Sheffield. It's uh, absolutely superb. I mean, it's, it's not just Sheffield United. It gives a whole lift to, uh, to Sheffield as well. But quite interesting, when, when that happened, uh, I put down a motion on the other paper at the House of Commons, and I got Joe Ashton and Bill Mickey both Wednesday I to sign it, so uh, even they were delighted. So it went right through Sheffield, and so it's, it's a great thing for the club, great thing for Sheffield. And having Sheffield United in the first division does what I think any major city needs. It lifts the morale, it boosts the feelings of people in the city, but above all it adds to the image of the city, both nationally and internationally. Denison with the corner. You have to watch out for the ball as it swung across. There is ball causing the nuisance in there, and it's either he or Andy Much that scores, and they seem to be crediting it with Steve Ball. How do you stop that man? Um, it's cross blotted out there. There's Roskin. He puts the cross in. Oh, it's a goal! Or was it a cross? Or was it a shot? It's certainly a goal, and that's all that matters for Sheffield United. They're all square at one apiece. Just look at this. Unbelievable. Clip of the throw. So Sheffield United trying to make uh, Wolves suffer here because here's John Gannon and in and as fine a piece of football as you could wish to see. Took it down superbly, picked his spot, and that is a beautiful goal. So United wait for the corner. Here it comes. Clicked on. Agana. And they appeal for the penalty at the far post. It's not given the referee right on the spot. A chance for West Ham to make a foray in his Slater. And has he been brought down? The referee says yes. Penalty. You judge for yourselves. I think perhaps the referee was right. He's missed it. It's off the bar. And Sheffield United can come away with it. With Bradshaw. Well, what an astonishing miss there from West Ham. As they concede the corner. And West Ham now making a rare foray into Sheffield United's half. And we'll just have to defend this one calmly. Not too calm there as West Ham come forward again. And there's Ward. Far post. 1 0. Well, can you believe it? Mark Ward, the scorer. Here's Slater. And here's Slater again. And he's brought down again. And it's penalty number two for West Ham. Will they miss the first? Will they miss the second? So Ward, who scored the first goal, has scored the second from the penalty spot. And this one from the Spanish scoreline. And that's uh, the Barnsley defence court square there. Bradshaw, and that's his first goal for the club. United's new signing from Manchester City. Goal number one for him. It's 1-0 in this one. The clearance charge down there. 
And David Curry is the first to react. And that's a good save. And I feel that Curry should have scored there. Cross comes in. Far post. And who's the first to react? Well, I think it was Brian Dean in the end. So Ronzi looking for the equaliser. Going for the United half. Morris out with it. But here's Agnew. It's all square. It's level at one apiece. Agnew the scorer. So we're into injury time here. And here's John Francis. Is he going to win it with the last kick? He's brought down. It's a penalty. Curry is the man that has brought John Francis down. Bryson. And 2 1 it is. All three points to Sheffield United. So it's United. That's played down into the corner. Garner with a lot of work to do, he does it well. And it falls nicely to Bradshaw. Oh, he's in a good seam at the moment. He scored against Barnsley, and he scored again here. Well, look at the space he was given. Cuts inside. Thank you very much indeed. Corner to United. Goalkeeper not really committing himself fully there, Scott Barrett. As Bryson gets it across. And, well, two heads there. I think the final touch of Garner's. The defence all over the shot. But Garner's final touch, the decisive one. So, really trying to get itself organised. It wasn't very organised. And United feel they should have scored there. So here we come with Gary Hackett. That's a left foot crossing. Bouncing all over the place, but Beagre there. Tracy equal to it. He needed two attempts. Gunning. <laughs> Everybody went for that one, and in the end it was cleared. Here comes Stoke once more. The United have caught themselves out there on the far post. Some good still coming in for me and Scott. It's still not clear, and is that a penalty? The referee's whistle went straight to his mouth. And I think Booker guilty of the mis misdemeanor. Yeah, Bob Booker bringing his man down. The referee right on the spot. And there it is. Tracy with a big kick. Dean first there. Agana. They've linked well again, these two. Here's Bradshaw. It's on again. Well, those two have combined with a series of flicks and Brian Dean has scored. What a super goal. Here comes Sheffield United again. Okay. Has it gone off nicely? Oh, yes, what a goal! because that's a goal and Tracy was caught out by the flight of that ball United are able to recover it and here they come again Booker doing the, uh, the work there As United come forward once more and he's caused all sorts of problems and what a finish well how much would you put on this man brilliant Goes and one, I think, for uh, Bradshaw to do what he can with, and he does rather well. He still does well. He's scooped up. He's here, I think, for uh, United. Oh, what a finish! Well, Tracy, absolutely no chance there. What a finish! Mind you, trying to reassert their authority on this game. And Dean. And that's all. And he's brought down surely. That's got to be a penalty. Well, the defence clearly died. 
the referee making his decision immediate. And watch again. Oh, if it was, it was an arm. I must say, I have my doubts. The referee on the spot. And so to the penalty. Peter Duffield with it. It's clearly here. Chance there for Portsmouth to clear the line, but here's Bradshaw first to it. Needs a good cross, but it wasn't quite delivered. Play forward again for Francis. Well, I felt he was held there, and I think so did the referee, because he's given the penalty. Well, look at that, there's no doubt about it. What on earth the defenders can complain about that one? So, a second chance, and a second penalty. Peter Duffield again. There's Leeds United and Newcastle pushing us, which we anticipate will happen throughout the season. But we're still two points clear of uh, Leeds United. We've lost at home to West Ham when we could have won. But having been reasonably fair, we were rather fortunate to have beaten Wolves. So we could have lost that. But at the end of the day, I'm delighted to have 34 points from 15 games. Well, I think I was able to savour it this time and realise what was happening. At Wimbledon it happened so very quickly and people didn't expect it. Whereas this time we were at the top and although it was nerve-wracking, uh, it was good to savour it and I really enjoyed it. Each promotion gets better, there's no doubt about that. Um, comparing Wimbledon with Sheffield, well, you can't. I mean, Sheffield is a big club. Wimbledon were only a little club. Um, to be fair, I can't really remember very much about the promotion at Wimbledon. It seems crazy, doesn't it? But... Sheffield is such a big club and, and there was so many people behind him and th they were bursting at the seams to celebrate up here in Sheffield. It, it was tremendous. I loved every minute of it. Well, I think it's tremendous. It's a boost not only to the city, but just as importantly, all those fans have for many years have never stopped supporting them and pushing them. And all the um, sponsorships have been giving, trying to get money for players, things of that nature. I think it's absolutely incredible because they certainly deserve it. The fans to me have been absolutely incredible. They've always uh, been a well supported club with, with a bit of success. I'm mean, even in the top of the fourth division. I know just the gates. Similar to a club like Aston Villa, when they were in the third division, they were getting 50,000, one or two home games. And Sheffield United, very much the same. They'd, they're desperate for success. I think that our, our supporters have waited a hell of a long while for this. It's 14 years, I think, and they deserve it. I was thinking some of these uh, fans, really, nine years of age, eight years of age, I mean, uh, what age were some of them? Most probably 20, so there were six, most probably can't even remember. So it's a new uh, world of football for majority of our young supporters. That's going to be very exciting for them. Well, it stayed in. And here are Leicester on the chase. Oh, what can they do here? And I think it's squeezed past the far post and very close indeed from Mark North. So they can be united again. Booker there. And Dean. I don't know where it is, but he got the second touch well. And Dean just over the bar. Ruled by United. And so was that. Now then, what can Bryson do? First hand cross, and it's in. And I think it could be an own goal. Well, despair amongst the Leicester players. Alan Evans with the final touch, I feel. Well, judge for yourselves. Here come Leicester again. Not too much of this half. Callister and touched in by Mark North. All square. So here come United on this left hand flank. Dean with it. He uses his rangy legs to get the better of the defenders. And there's Bradshaw, far post. 1 0. Gannon returns it with interest. What a goal! Well, well, well. Back with, back with it. Uh, Mitchell. And we get support from Julie. 
Trying to pour some neat stuff in and around the box here. Oh, straight through Tracy's hands. All square at 1 1. Still ranks of the Geordie fans getting behind their men. Sheffield United with a chance here. From Francis. And that's a sweet shot, and that's not too far over the bar from John Francis. So here in Newcastle again, losing out, John Francis. Bringing it back from John Francis and sending a long ball through there. And here's John Gallagher. And what a finish, and what a goal! John Gallagher. Newcastle again. Ray Ransom. And this. Tracy is just a very good outcome. Ransom. Pull back pedaling there. As Newcastle really start to turn the screw. And Simon Tracy really tested there. And getting down at the far post. Tracy out. It's not clear, and there is Mickey Quinn. Header, Mick Quinn. Uh, Leeds United have cut our lead down to one point and uh, Newcastle are still in pursuit along with Sunderland but we're still there, we lost our first away game of the season as well but that's to be expected, delighted to be top, I'm, I'm very very pleased you can't, you can't take anything away from them um, they've tried so hard, they've been down, they've been up, they've been down, now they're up and God willing they'll stay up yeah, I've been a United Art since I could basically understand the difference between two teams. Um, I was brought up in an area where everybody were Wednesdayites, and I suppose I, I would naturally have been a, a Wednesdayite, but something it just didn't fit, you know, and I like the colour red, and I like Tony Curry and Alan Woodward, and um, that sort of, like, started me off. Um, my father was... My father supported both teams, but he, in, in, re, in reality, he's a Unitedite. He just used to go to, to Wednesday when United were in Division 2 because he used to like to go and see First Division football and in those days in the 60s it always seemed that we were the yo-yo clubs want to go up want to go down as has happened last season so it's happening again I hate football You have to appreciate that with somebody like Elton John um, at Watford it, he is 100% his own man and he writes his own songs and he performs them and he pays a wage to a band and, and he recoups nearly 100% of, of everything so uh, for us to for me to be in the same position as Elton John, Def Leppard would have to sell five times as many records as Elton John, which, I mean, we're doing very well at the moment, but we don't sell uh, comparing catalogues anywhere near Elton John. He's been around for 20 years and we haven't, you know. I'll definitely come, no, as long as it's some food, because I always go where the food's free, of course, as you know that. Um, but I'll definitely go. It's something that I wouldn't mind getting involved in. I mean, if I'm going to put money into something, that's a bit of a risk. I'd rather put it into my football team than say back in a horse. You know. So we delay whilst we wait for the corner from Gannon. And here it comes. And Booker! Now oh, the corner took an age to come over. But boy, is it worth it? Oh, Bob Booker. Oh, he does like scoring goals. From Gannon. Oh goodness, he's caused some problems in there. Bradshaw. Oh, I should have done better with that one. The goal was gaping. And he knows it. So, the clearance from Burgess. Watch back and the problems here for United. And my goodness gracious me, you don't get closer than that without scoring. United. Losing out there, I feel. The I mean, situation's been recovered by Booker. Oh dear, he's really got a lot of skill for a big man. This comes in. And across the area, and here's Booker. And Dean. And Dean again, how did he squeeze it in? And only he will know that he's got the goal, and that's what counts. Oh, a touch of fortune. But the goal counts. English night. Kicked on. And Booker. <laughs> well, he's got another one of those goals at the far post. Where does he creep up from? Just look at that. 
nobody was there. And he hardly had to lift his head to hold it in the back of the net. He defends here from West Brom again. Oh, what a finish. What a goal. So it goes north into the air. One for Duffield to race onto. Oh, he took a bit of a nap there, but it's gone in anyway. But just look at that. And he's hurt. And with a stretcher on. And that is the sorriest sight you're likely to see in football. Yes! What a vital goal for Sheffield United. He's up above everybody there. What a finish. So United seeking all three points after failing, of course, to beat Port Vale. On the number of ending 1-1. They'd like to beat their Yorkshire neighbours, Leeds United, into the process. Well, let's thank you with one mighty free kick there. Booker. And it's a chance now, but I think it's offside. Yep, the referee have called it up for offside. A good effort. So, is it going to be Sterling or Strachan with the free kick? Looks like Sterling drives it. Oh, what a finish! Have you ever seen a better goal? The ex Sheffield Wednesday man has done it. 1 0 to Leeds United. So, United desperate to get back on terms. Remember, 1 0 to Leeds. In possession. Even away. Winding Hoodie. And he's got a bit of space ahead of him. Uzi Bradshaw. Rostrum. It's won a piece. And Wilfie Rostrum, where did he come from? Nobody spotted him coming from left back. Except Bradshaw. He sent him a quite superb cross. Just look at this provision. And there, first to it, Wolfie Rostrum. And let's see it from behind the goal now. Not bad, that one. And again. Bradshaw across the area. And he saw that Bill Boston here was racing in. And he was first to it. A delicate little touch. And Mervyn Day in the Leeds United goal, no chance. So, here we go again. Up the corner. Boston. Score of the first goal, remember, for Sheffield United. All square at 1-1, with Bryson hitting that one, hitting that one across. And there's a Garner! Booker with the header across, Tony Garner, and Sheffield United in this crucial game are ahead. Now the question is, can they keep it? Bryson with the cross, the knockback from Booker, and sending Mel Sterling the wrong way, Tony Garner with that shot. There you are. They're all over the place, the Leeds defence. And it's 2-1 to Sheffield United. Well, I think a bit of a hit-and-hope ball here, to be fair, for me and Bryson. Can you book a read it well here? Just watch him coming up on the far post. Nice header. And the ball as much space as he wants. Beautiful finish. So, as time ticks away, the question is, will Sheffield United hold on to their slender 2-1 lead? Well, not if Leeds United can help it. Still in possession there, causing all sorts of problems. United desperately defending. Here come Leeds again. And Davison! And what a finish! It's all square! It's 2-2! Two -two. two successive draws for United, they just think they need a win here, but Blackburn Rovers are the type of team that could thwart them. That's a very good pass indeed, putting the defence into pressure. Here's Dean. And that's a brilliant goal. Oh, he didn't finish it well. Ryan Dean. And he goes to the crowd to celebrate a very might. What a firm hit. He might have just bobbled over the keeper. That's a firm idea here. Yeah, just a little bobble there. In the square. Have, uh, managed to get this one deep into the area. Webster with the header. And a firm shot that Tracy, all his body behind it. The rare attacks here. Into the middle. This looks like Kennedy. It is Kennedy. And it's 1 1. So 
Sheffield United on the attack again. The problem's here. And Dean, has he finished them? No, off the post. United again, winning the ball first as it comes to Bryson. And that's a good save. They would let them try to play it out of defence. And here they come. Forward again. And then in the middle. And that's off the post, but pushed onto it by Simon Tracy. And United do it again. Oh, goodness, only just. And they've really started to turn the score on United. Let it come again. It's Garner. Simon Garner. And that is a disaster for Sheffield United. We've slipped from first to second. Leeds have just got in front. But we've still got points in front of the teams chasing us. And they've got everything to do. I'd have settled for this, as I said earlier, at the start of the season. People think the bubble's burst. I don't think it has. There's a lot of games to go. And the table will change during that period of time. Hopefully we can get back into pole position. Well, all the players did well at uh, various times and uh, did exceedingly well throughout the season. But Simon Tracy had an excellent season. I mean, considering it was his first season uh, in the team and uh, his first season in Football League, he did remarkably well and showed good assurity and professionalism, which augurs well for the future. But then Paul Stancliffe had an excellent season. He seemed to be injury-free until just the last moments. Dino carried on where he left off and actually finished up the season even stronger than he did the previous season and looked very, very good. But then John Gannon came from Wimbledon from no and played nearly all the games until he broke his arm, again contributed. Colin Hill and Dave Barnes did also the same. It was their first taste of success. They came from new clubs and they contributed very, very well. If you want to take Wilf Rostrum, Wilf come on a free transfer, filled in for us, did tremendously well when Dave Barnes was injured, then went into midfield for John Gannon at the end of the season. I was happy to come across here. Uh, I wasn't getting a place over Wednesday and a lot of they weren't doing too well and Dave was short of a full-back, so it, it was nice and easy for me, really. And it's, well, it turned out the best thing to do by a long way. And we've got to say that Ian Bryson weighed him with his uh, 12, 13 goals, which were vital. Paul Wood came at a vital time for us. And Carl Bradshaw, I mean, really, I'm mentioning everybody because really all in their own way, they contributed enormously for us. I'm, I've always a great admirer of, uh, of, of Paul Stancliffe because I think that there's always got to be uh, a centre pin around a team. But having said that, it seems to me from what I've seen on TV and what I've read in the press, it's the ability of strength of depth of players and it's those reserves that have come in when there's been injuries uh, that have obviously played a major role. Um, Booker and a few others have clearly uh, had an influence on the team. Yeah, it's, uh, I've got a little bit of a following now and it's uh, really taken off and uh, you know, a bit took back like really, I can't quite believe it. Uh, just gone from strength to strength and you know, I just like thanking them, it's been brilliant. We've got some great players, I think we've got the best goalkeeper in each second division. Sorry, first division, eh? Uh, Tracy's brilliant. We've got Dean and Agana, and we've got Bryce, and we've got some fabulous players, and I'm so chuffed that old Stan's going to have a season in first division, because he deserves it, doesn't he? So, Oxford then, just beginning to uh, assert their authority on this game early on. Here they come. It should be Stankiff's, though. No, it's not. But it is Simpsons. And that's a good shot, and it's beaten Tracy at the far post. And 1 0 to Oxford is the scoreline. United, half of them pushing up, half of them staying. And here's Simpson again. Good save from Tracy. But he's out of his area, and there is Steen. In acres of space, the ex Luton man. Acres of space. And United are not getting much in front of goal. And here come Oxford on the break again with Penny. And here's Steen, one of the Oxford scorers. And here's Simpson, the other scorer. His second. Oxford's third. And of course, if United are to get into the first division, they will have to go over this new spell. Remember, 1 1 against Ipswich, that game marred by the tragic broken leg to make play. And here's Bryson. And there's a Garner. And has the lean spell ended? Not by Dean, but a Garner, I can assure you, was the scorer. And there he is. Look how he rises above everybody. How much space does he need? Thank you very much indeed. Bison with the corner. It's across everybody! Oh! Oh, Middlesbrough. 
you up one of their nine lives there, I'm sure. We haven't done as well as we'd like to have done in the month. We're still maintaining our form, and I'm reasonably happy with that. One or two of the teams below us have changed positions, so they're battling out, and they've still got a lot of points to make up on us. Well, I think it's tremendous that Sheffield United is in the first division, obviously. Um, I'm not a local man myself, but I've been here a number of years now, and uh, I'm almost, almost into it as much as Len. I mean, I'm really thrilled that United are back in the first division, and... Uh, Dave Bassett has done a tremendous job there. It's almost impossible to make a comparison. One remembers Badger and Woodward and Curry and all of those people, Keith Eddy. Some of those people would not get in Dave Bassett's side. And I don't mean that as a criticism, but Dave Bassett plays a style of football completely different to anything we've seen at Bramall Lane. Don't forget that um, the John Harris team did get relegated as well as winning promotion. It's nice to see the big clubs back at Bramall Lane. We, uh... I mean, we, we always played really at the top level. We went down in the second division for a spell. But we always used to see the big teams at Bramall Lane. It's just nice to see those back. So I remember, you know, people like Job, uh, Doc Pace, uh, Graham Shaw, Joe Shaw, Hodgkinson in, in, in the nets, uh, and then a little later with, uh, with Tony Curry uh, and the others. Uh, Jones uh, played down at the lane. Um, but there's always been a, a, a team spirit about Sheffield United. Uh, probably people say that because I'm a Sheffield United guy, but nevertheless, I, I do believe that. And it's always tended to be a family club as well. Uh, and so I, I think the team spirit follows through. I think the dedication is probably a little bit greater now than it was then. Uh, but that's professionalism anyway. I mean, that's the demands now of professional football. Well, you can't compare, can you? you well, no, definitely I don't can't so. compare. Different eras. Different eras. Yeah. No, I think that. Uh, well, the sides are completely different to start with. Physically uh, and fitness-wise, I don't think that we could live with the lads today. I don't know whether it's better or worse than, um, than the 71 squad, but it's just as exciting for me. We, we were at a, a match this year, weren't we? We watched the game at Barnsley. One of the sponsors invited us, and after the game, two of the lads, Agana and Dean, came to do a, a raffle prize draw or whatever, and they walked through the door, and then turned to me and said, Christ, he said, I think I'm stood in a hole. I mean, the, the lads are up here, you know, it's... Uh, and Agana doesn't look too big on the field, but he was about a foot taller than we are, so it is a different game. Physically, well, uh, we might struggle with it. You used to be that tall, but you ran that much. <laughs> you ran your legs off, didn't you? I mean, you were six foot when you started. Doing so your running, yeah. Well, thanks very much. No, you can't... Uh, it's dangerous to compare eras. Well, precious little between these sides so far. Well, to believe that they're at the opposite end of the second division. I wonder if that might change now with Sheffield United on the attack. As Buckley goes down, and Agana finishes it off. The referee has blown his whistle, and it won't count. Webster to Agana. Well, he could cause some problems. And that's a brilliant shot. And Ian Hesper's goal is leading a charm life this afternoon. So, United again with the throw. They really are piling on the pressure here. Here's Dean. Oh, so near! So, United with it all to do. Five players around it. This is definitely one they worked at, and Webster wasn't far away, was he? My goodness. So, United again with Dean meeting. Oh, oh, oh yes, what a goal! Ryan Dean! There he was, unchallenged, far close, into the back of the net. That's caused a few problems there. The goalkeeper, Reese Wilmot, all over the place. Here's a Garner. What can he do with it? Turns it to the far post. Nod back into Brian Dean. And off the line by, I think, Mickey Marker. The right hand side, and he's got support here. This is Bradshaw. Bradshaw fancies his chances, and that wasn't too far over, was it? So United have begun to find their form again. And they've got some points between themselves in Newcastle. There's McGee, though. And he could stop it. Good save. Oh, Barnes really having to do the clearing job there off the line. My goodness, that was close. And I feel that David Barnes could have had a free kick there. The referee doesn't agree. I felt he was barged, but a corner kick is the decision. So let's see what Newcastle can make of this. Certainly David Barnes very brave to go there. And saving United's bacon for now at least. So the corner comes in. 
and defended by United, but uh, it's come back again across the area, and trouble here. It's not clear yet, and I think that's an own goal. So United then having to rescue this situation. They didn't really want Newcastle to get a goal, and now they find themselves 1-0 behind. Dean, oh! Well, that was a cracking shot, but just wide of the post, and still United trail. Going in a good position. And Newcastle in a spot of bother. It's all sorted out by Brian Dean. He's finished it off. It's all square. 1-1. One, one. Leeds are still those few points in front of us. There's everything to play for. We're in a great position to try and get promotion. Uh, but we mustn't get carried away because March and April are vital times and it's where the people can keep their nerve during these periods. But having said that, if somebody said to me back in August, would you settle after 30 games to have 56 points and be in second place, I'd have been more than happy and I'd have put a lot of money on with the bookies. Obviously in David Bassett, they've got a very good manager who can motivate uh, and that, I think, is a, a major benefit and a boost to the club as a whole. He's his own man. He knows what he wants, which is, is uh, ideal from a chairman point of view because you sit down and he puts his cards on the table and he accepts um, the outcome. If it's there and you can help him, you say yes, and he does it. And if you say you can't, well, he accepts that, which is superb from a chairman's point of view because he understands the, the chairman's role. Sometimes it's quite difficult, actually. The public eye bit can be quite... takes some getting used to when you get stopped in the street and they want to talk to him all the time. But um, on the whole, it, it's great. I wouldn't have it any other way. To get the players to be able to pull together in a way which literally sells the blades from Sheffield. And that's what he's been able to do with the players in making it possible to get into the first division. He's a great guy, but more than that, I think the, 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 the reason for that is a Cockney, that's true. He's got a good record in football, but he's come to the community and he's become part of the community. And I think that's a very important for a manager. I think people respond uh, to the orders that he gives out in the team. And I think the community respect him when he's up here. He's an honest lad. He does his best for the team. He's obviously doing his best for Sheffield. I think he's took Sheffield to heart as Sheffield's taken him to heart. I wish I could bottle it. Uh, I don't know what the secret is. Um, he's just, he's an honest fella. And he's very, very enthusiastic about the game. And as far as football's concerned, he likes to be very, very organised. No, no, he doesn't bring it home, actually. He's tremendous in that respect. Um, win, lose or draw. When he walks through the front door, he, he's, he's got rid of his frustrations in the dressing room. And to be fair, he's brilliant like that. I, I can't complain at all. The delight of working with, with a fellow like Dave Bassett from a journalist point of view, and that's not nonsense. I mean, he, he, he's terrific. In the middle of all this, he, he was able, he, he has a, a, a natural, I don't know, is this, the, is this the former insurance salesman or what coming out? I don't know, but he's a delight he to does it work with. Yeah. 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 And all, all the boys who uh, followed along, the radio and the press, we all said that if he goes, we go. So United on the attack again. There's Dean. Uh, it's a fortunate ricochet, but the goal counts. It's there by Dan Whitehouse. Oh, he's delighted with that one. Well, just look here. Brian Dean's backside. And one it is. with Dean. They could do. Oh, very nice. Thank you very much indeed, he says. Well, he seems to have all the time in the world. And scooped in. Oh, a fine goal. That really is a super goal for me and McCall. And it's there. And who's got the last touch? None other than Paul Stancliffe. And doesn't he deserve it? The skipper scores. Just a left foot of his to set off Tony Agana. Agana, as easy as you like, but he's taken a knock. Just look how late the Bradford man comes in because the shot's here and the tackle's there. That wasn't good football from Bradford. It was brilliant by United. 
and the goal counts and that I suppose at the end of the day is what matters so Tony Agano, the scorer of the fourth goal appears to have no further part to play in this action so we're all lined up for the corner and Gannon will take, here he is there you go and Booker, it's 1-0 Bob Booker Trying to uh, press home the advantage, they're in behind Booker and in behind Tracy, it's one apiece. Alder and Wood against his former side. Well, the irony of ironies. 2 1. The United then all on to defend this one out, and they haven't done very well, have they? It's all square again, it's 2 2. In comes the corner, clicked on, and Dean, it's 1-0. Oh, what a crucial goal, an early breakthrough for United, and Brian Dean has scored it. Look how he gets up here. Well, he didn't have much space, but he made use of what he had. Thompson. Again, trying to use this flick on her walls. Trying to get ball away, but that isn't ball, that's Venus. For some, Tracy getting... Behind it enough to turn it over. Good. This good against Brighton, so he's really on top of his form. He's trying to get Bryson away here. Bryson. Shows to go with his left. Now with his right. Oh, and Kendall caught out there. The bar saving Wolves on that occasion. So the Wolves have largely been penned back in their own half. With the free kick, but not uh, really troubling United much with it. Could be in trouble themselves here as Bellamy brings down Dean. Is it a penalty? You see here, it is a penalty, most definitely. Again, move it. Top corner. Oh, corner. It doesn't matter, they all count. And that was a neat penalty indeed from Gannon. Moves with the free kick. Want to test Tracy perhaps, and Tracy is first to it. And Dennison couldn't do much with the return. So it's left to the centre backs to do something with it here. And the, the break is on for United. And here they come storming away with Rostron. Rostron inside. And here's Wood. Is he going to score? Would save Kendall. Here's Todd. And eventually seen out by Gary Bellamy. Todd with the throw. Into the area. Whitehurst. Good work. Kendall with the kick. And Gannon losing out though to Steve Paul. Now what can the England striker do here? Has he scored? Oh, and she's wide. Gannon changing the angle of attack rather. Sending that one square. And what can United construct from here? Well, not a lot, we've lost the ball. The Wolves have got a chance to do something with it, but Bryson's won it back. And here they come with Dean. Sheffield United on the attack. Across it goes to Whitehurst, and that is his first goal for the club. And where did he learn to head a ball like that? A lesson for all youngsters. Here you are, you'll see it again. Brilliant header. So the keeper to launch yet another West Ham attack. This one with Booker. And in there by Allen. Well, he reacted quickly. Booker under pressure. And Allen finishing the job. Allen, he's got a bit of space here. He tries to use it. He's down. And it's a penalty. I wouldn't mind seeing that one again. Just look at that. He was tripped. It was outside the box. The referee has given a penalty. Jimmy Quinn. And the Northern Ireland International makes no mistake with that one. 2-0 to West Ham. That's what we really have United on the rack in this game. Look at United, they pulled all over the place. It's Jimmy Quinn. And how easy do you want it? Well, that was a simple goal in anybody's book. Still West Ham come. 3-0 up, of course. 
This looks like Trevor Morley. And the ex villa man makes no mistake, it's 4-0, and United are in all sorts of disarray. And once again, attack down the flanks, here come West Ham. Knocked back. And a deflection, and in! It's Quinn with the hat-trick. But United claim hands, the referee says goal. And so the trusted left foot of John Gannon is asked to, once again, provide the corner ammunition for Sheffield United. Ball and in by Cole Wood. Yes, Wood has scored. 1 0 to Sheffield United. Bit of a scramble, but you'll see as he turns away, it's clearly Paul Wood. Here's Banks. Barnsley really desperately need the points if they're not to go out to the bottom of the second division. And, and in, it's all square at 1 1. And Agnew has scored. Comes in. Gannon. Crossing from Bryson. Met there by Booker. Oh, I thought it was in for a moment. I think so did Bob Booker. So Tracy sending another one of his mighty long kicks deep into the Barnsley half. Dean. Well, he's got the better of the Barnsley defence here. Here's Whitehurst. I think Webster coming in late there. But the ball is wide and Barnsley can breathe again. A good effort from Webster. They've got a bit of aggression in the middle there. They definitely want to uh, secure everything from this game. And here they come again. As the ball's punched at the back post and there is Saville. And that is a disaster for Sheffield United. And Saville has scored. I have to say that Stoke City look anything but... The bottom side in the second division. All that could change now with Dean sending that one high. And Bryson's in there. And so is Barnes and Bryson again. And this time it's saved. Lighted up the wing. And here again is Brian Dean. And that one is sent long. And that puts the uh, Stoke defence under considerable pressure. And a good finish. The goalkeeper was equal to it. Here's Bryson again. He's been given a lot of space here. I really love this. And that's a great ball out to Agana. And that's a fine finish from Brian Dean. Sheffield United 1-0 up. And what a marvellous finish. What a good break. And what a superb diving header. The other teams below us have got to make up ground and uh, one or two of them have got to have a very, very good run to catch us. Uh, we've got to look at the teams like Swindon and Newcastle and Blackburn, whether they can maintain that. We've got to keep our nerve and if we keep winning our games, there's very little they can do about it. Now, I was one of the folk, I must confess, who said during the winter, this promotion drive will burn out. I still joked, I, I got out of it late season by saying that the promotion drive has burned out and the players just refuse to accept that it has. Yes, uh, fine achievement. I think the achievement uh, runs pretty parallel with ourselves over the last two years. Uh, we've had an excellent association with Sheffield United over the past uh, four or five years and delighted that they've made Division One. My dad was a professional footballer, so I've been brought up with football. Um, Yes, I love it. Yes, it's very exciting. I think it's just as exciting for me this season, being in the first division, as it is for all the fans. Another turning point was at Oldham, when we felt that the team were on their knees. I mean, they obviously didn't feel it. We felt it. And that, that was, was the away when, they when, when they went out on the plastic. Yes, yeah. uh, Oldham hadn't been beaten for 38, 39 games, whatever the statistics were. Probably haven't been beaten since. And we went there, and the attitude and everything was right. G as a small as earlier in the season, Eddie Penfield, very shaky indeed. Still does, because here's Dean. And Whitehurst needed to react there, but he didn't. Here's Bryson. Across it comes once more. Oh, what a finish! And I told you that the Sunderland defence is poor, and Brian Dean exploited that to the full. Let's look at this. Three men in front of him, the ball's in the back of the net, though. Keeper did well. 
And he'll remember to Sheffield United. So he can find Gabbiadini. And he gets the return and Gabbiadini could go all the way. And it does go all the way. Straight into the back of the United net. And what a piece. In comes the cross. Up go the heads. Oh! Well, United will not get much closer without scoring this season. Gannon with the corner. And once more, let's go up and once more the woodwork. Saves Sunderland. A drop kick. Oh, yeah, it's got some yards on it. Chance for Todd to def Oh dear, he's given it away. And here's Gabbiadini. And that has punished Sheffield United. Disaster. And Mark Todd will kick himself over that one. Making me my words, I said their defence was in disarray, but today it's Sheffield United's defence in somewhat disarray, and there he is again, Marco Gabbiadini, and he's made it 3 1. Garner! Oh, almost the equaliser. For goal number two, it's Kenny Black. Shot, and it's 3 0. And Portsmouth have the advantage. And here comes Sheffield United with Todd. Nice goal. 3 1. He sweeps that one into the area, and there's Morris. And Morris is running back to 3 2. United, who have the Indian sign on Watford this season, hoping to take advantage. But uh, Watford with a, an early goal, and that's a disaster for United. 1 0 behind. Held back there. The ball goes into the middle. Oh, yeah, Garner. The second attempt by Tony Kilton. And that's the long throw. And let's head it on to. It's not been cleared yet. The Garner's in there. And the Garner's in there again. And he sorts the mess out, and there was a mess in there. Tony Garner says, Thanks very much. Here's Paulwood. Good guy he's been. Now tries to turn his man inside and out. Cross. Oh yes, it's there. Brilliant. Booker. Just look how he gets up behind his men. Super stuff. So Watford with the free kick. And that one's a test of the chasing. Nobody else to turn it away. Again now, he's on and running. Oh. oh, where did he find that bobble? Dear, oh dear, oh dear. Just look at this. Bang, wallop, thank you. Oh, the chase is on. And who's going to get there first? It could be Whitehurst. It is. Wow, well, just look at that. There we go. Spotted somebody there, and it's Bob Booker, and Booker has made no mistake with the head. Quite super goal. Look at that. Brilliant. Sort it out with steam. It's a good one across the area. It's all square. It's 1-1. One, one. Stancliffe with the throw. Oh, and Jones having no chance with that one. And his own player. 2-1 to United. Strachan, Strachan, and finish there by Strachan. Gary Speed, there's lots of it. Gary Speed, oh, he's there. Disaster for United. Oh, just look at Mark Morris's face. It says it all. How badly will that affect Sheffield United promotion chances? So Skipper Ball Stankliff with the long throw. It's quite long as well. Whitehurst. Bryson. Bryson now. Bryson again! Bryson a second time! Uh, George Courtney, I see he has his arm up. He indicates offside. There he is, you see him now. 
parking. Well, first forward again, suspiciously offside. Play continues. And thankfully for Sheffield United, the striker missing it was largely an open goal. Hills. You know these players, we put Bill Hall in very brain. He's going to the imagination. Park and goal. Brave indeed by Tracy. Sheffield United some problems in there. Oh, not only problems, but a goal as well. So George Courtney awarding United a corner kick. They line up in the middle. There they are. And who's going to get it? It's at the far post. And oof, Mark Drew is the first to react there. Fingertips and over the bar. Mitchell with the cross. Brighton! It's there! Well, I don't know how that one got in. Maybe the replay will tell us. There it is. Well. Oh. <laughs> cleared yet. It's come to Dean again. Can he finish it? He can. And that could be a vital goal because Dean paid the price because he gets a big whack there. So the free kick all lined up and ready to take. And Hill. Four. Oh, yes, it's there. How did that one go in? Rice and the scorer. And then this one away. Rice and again. And it's there. Rice and using the divots to good effect. This one bottles there. And Peyton, the Irish international, no chance. Arms. his man. Oh, and that's a lucky ricochet, if ever there was one. Brian Dean, it's no mistake, but I feel that he might have been caught offside. Yep, offside it is. Here come Bombers again. Connect! Oh, it's there! Connect against his former side! And here's one. He's done well. Dean do equally well. He's messing about a bit there. Now Agana, well it wasn't a brilliant goal but uh, turned in nicely by Agana, just look at that. And Peyton no chance. And so will we come again with Bournemouth. Oof, that must be a penalty. Yeah, the referee not having any of that. Wallop, it's there. So, United haven't won this game yet. Ryan Dean, there he is at the far post, and nobody, but nobody was marking him. Newcastle have had a tremendous run and pushed themselves in there and put pressure on both us and Leeds. And it's going to be a very interesting last day of the season with both Leeds and Newcastle not having games. If we can win at Blackburn, it's all over. If we draw, we're still then reliant on winning at Leicester to get, the, get us promotion automatically. But if we lose at Leicester, then we've got to rely on Newcastle or Leeds to slip up. Yes, I suppose it's nice to go from the fourth uh, back to the first and also to do it over the centenary year. That was very exciting. I mean, the, when you come to think, the centenary year literally covered uh, the return to the first division, if you take it in a 12-month cycle. So we went uh, through the third and into the first. It couldn't have been a, a better centenary for the club. Well, I think uh, the people of Sheffield felt that they had a right to be in the first division. I think they've now realised, been out of the first division for a long time, you have no right, dependent upon your stadium or anything else. You've got to earn that right. We've got to the first division. We've got to try and make sure that we consolidate ourselves and try and turn ourselves into a good first division team. But what we mustn't do is become complacent and think that because we've arrived, everything could be hunky-dory in the first division. There'll be a lot of ups and downs, and we've got to come through them, and the fans have got to come through them equally as much as the team and myself. It's put Sheffield... Uh, well, he's put Sheffield United back on the map, hasn't it? Never have enjoyed the 90 minutes. Uh, that's, that's hell, that is. Now, I enjoyed the build-up to it, and I enjoy it after the game, because if I lose, I, I'm a good, I think I'm a good sportsman, I can lose uh, and still retain that sense of uh, dignity and pride the, uh, in the club. So uh, I enjoy it, the beginning and the end, but uh, not the 90 minutes. Wilder with the corner. Up the heads. And uh, well, that was a bit of a nothing header, really.
Sellers, here he is on the right-hand side for Blackburn. Running at David Barnes and turning him inside and outside and shoots. And Simon Tracy is equal to it. Bryson with the cross. Is this the last throw of the dice for United? Wilder. Dean. If he scores now, surely they're up. And here's Whitehurst. Oh, he's missed it. Desperately unlucky. So as we the best dramas, the last game is the decider of the season. It's a bit like this. United win, they're up. They draw or lose, they look over their shoulders to find out what the rest of them are. Ahead, so United need to defend this one in these early stages. Not too well with it, because here's Reid. And that is about as big a disaster as Sheffield United are likely to have this season, because Leicester have taken the lead, and United now have to rescue the entire situation. Running well, and Wood! What a great goal! So brave against Martin Hodge, who was first to it, and now we're all square. Promotion's back on again. Look at that. This will just show you how brave he was. And Hodge was second best. Mm. Mm. Nice crossing. Barney can't get to it. Hodge can. Look in the face there. Here's Bryson. Off the line, is that a penalty? Is that a penalty? The grief, how many chances? Well, it took about three attempts, but in the end, Brian Dean gets there. And at last, Sheffield United are ahead. Just look how many times Leicester defended this one with whatever part of the anatomy they could get. Doesn't matter. In the end, Brian Dean has scored the goal. And at last, Sheffield United can breathe easy. Here's Wood. He's had a fine game. Back. Well, the far post is a gunner, and that must surely mean promotion for Sheffield United. Oh, yes, 3 1 it is. And Sheffield United with Terry Agana blasting their way ever more forward. Hodge nowhere. Austin. Oh, how did he get that one in? And where was Martin Hodge? Well, I must say that Hodge appears to be suffering from double vision and now he got that blow in the head. And he didn't see that one at all. 4-1. And it looks more and more as though Sheffield United will be a first division side next season. Waller. Hodge no way. And North, who's been in the goal for part of this game, has scored the goal. Sheffield United with time running out. Oh, if he got it, he can score here, they're in the first division. And he's done it. Oh, that's surely it. He must seal it. Well, they're going to think so. And I must agree with him. Just look at that. And that's a goal that Sheffield United fans won't run seeing again and again and again. North, if you listening now, he blows it. He signals the end of the game. And Sheffield United are a first division side. They've won promotion, they've won the game for the record 5-2, the three points have taken them up, and Sheffield United will play first division football next season. So bring on the likes of Arsenal, Liverpool and Tottenham Hotspur, and these fans will relish seeing those at Bramall Lane next season. It was unbelievable, I think it was a wonderful day. Um, to be fair, once I'd actually got to Leicester and I saw all the fans in fancy dress and the atmosphere there was amazing, I just knew it was going to be our day. I didn't have any fear. And I was so emotional, I kept crying. And I kept saying to myself, come on, what a win. Not an old man like I did, I did, Peter. And when I saw the fans in the streets of Leicester, I, I really, lump to the throat, tears down. And during the game, and, and TC, Okay. was in the same state. We were doing the commentary. Oh, good. And we were really, literally crying. Unfortunately, I wasn't there. I was away. I was in the Canary Islands at that time. And I had to listen to it on a real grotty little radio, shortwave radio, when the reception kept coming and going. And uh, the first thing I remember was um, the guy coming on the radio saying, and we're just going over to Filbert Street, there's the news of a goal. And it was Leicester going 1-0 up. And I thought, uh oh here we go. It's definitely going to go down the last minute. And then... 20 minutes later, it was back to Filbert Street, we're here, there's another goal, and it was either going to be one all or 2-0. But in actual fact, it turned out to be 2-1, because it was one all. and as by the time they got the radio link together, 
we scored just as, the, as they went live. So we went 2-1 up and then 3-1 and then 4-1. And by this time, I was jumping fully clothed into a pool with a glass of champagne in one hand, which went flying. <laughs> I lost that and ended up drinking chlorine instead. But it was, um, I got mightily drunk that night. I don't actually remember what happened after about 7 o'clock that day. Well, I think uh, when we lost 3-0 at Oxford, I knew we was definitely going up at that stage. Uh, but really, I think, quite honestly, with 10 minutes to go at Leicester, when we were winning 5-2 and I heard that Middlesbrough were 4-1 up, I even thought that uh, we couldn't even bleep that up. Thank <laughs> you. 